Um, this last uh, hour and a quarter um, is going to be tough and long, and per perhaps a little bit annoying. Depends. Um, so um, you have just seen what, what the rest is, what, what are the formats exchanged, basically. So I'm not expecting that you already know everything perfectly, but at least uh, you can understand what we are going to do. Um, the idea is to start uh, developing something practical and some, to start uh, providing some uh, real REST service in Python on the server side. And as we don't want to build everything from scratch, we start from the result of the um, lab we had on the, on the music player, if you remember. In the lab, uh, we developed uh, basically a very simple command line music player which was able to scan the, the music folders on your hard disk and then play the file you selected. And starting from that, we build up a REST music server for doing the same stuff uh, through REST interaction. So, what is the goal of today? You know the theory, or at least you already seen the theory in the hour before. We want to design a real REST service using Python, and in particular using Flask because it's the, the framework, the web framework we selected for this course. And we want to do it in a concrete way. So we want to work on uh, real Python scripts, starting from what we have done in the lab, preparing for the next lab. Okay, so we are building up something quite big. And this is about music. So we want to build basically a central music server to which you can ask to play files. So imagine to have a central music player in a big environment like this room, and everyone can connect and say, okay, now I want to play this song. So that's the goal. So what the server does? The same that the player did uh, last a week ago or two weeks ago. So we want to be able to scan one or more directories for music files, basically one. We want to be able to get metadata about each song in the directory, the usual author, title, genre, and album. And we can play single tracks and playlists. Playlist is an addition. We were able to just play tracks at that part. Okay. Up to now, nothing different uh, from the lab, but we want to expose those services not on the command line, not just for the uh, local PC user, but for everyone who is able to send commands over HTTP. To do that, we need to prepare a REST service, and the first step in defining a REST service is to identify what are the relevant resources we want to expose. Okay. So let's try just to reason very quickly on the resources. Which kind of resources do we handle with our simple player? Songs, let's call them tracks, okay? That may be either sing a single track or the collection of tracks, right? Yes, a one to many relation. And the other resource is the player. We, we have nothing else, just tracks to play and something to play the tracks. So, when we need to design the, the REST service, we just translate this set of resources in a set of REST resources. So our REST resources will be the tracks as a collection, the single track inside the collection, and the player, okay? And since a, a single track is part of a collection, actually the really the only two resources that we are going to expose are the tracks and the player, because the track is a, a subset of the collection of tracks. That is, okay, we identify the resources. We need to, to identify a route for our service. Let's call it API, Application Programming Interface. The application programming interface for us is about music, so why not starting with the road to music? It's the first version. Do you have uh, ever developed another API for music? Me, no. So for me, it's the version one, okay? And this is the root. 
After that, we attach the name of the resource. That in our case will be tracks and player. So our two endpoints, our two starting points for, for uh, the REST APIs will be slash music, slash API, slash version 1.0, slash tracks, which identifies the collection of all tracks managed by the server, okay? And the other resource will be slash music, slash API, version one, player, which identifies the player. So the ability that the, the server has to play a single track. Then, uh, given these two root endpoints, uh, how can we get the single track information? By applying the REST paradigm, we know that given a collection, to get a single entry of the collection, we just need to append to the last part of the URI, the ID of that single entry. So if we want to get the, the track with the internal ID equal to 134, we just need to call, to issue a get request on the URI given by the root endpoint plus the ID. So that would be slash music, slash API, slash version one, slash tracks, collection of tracks, slash ID, 134. So here we are, when we, when we send a get for this, we want to get back the information about the track number 134. Is it clear? Yes, okay. Okay, let's give a practical example. First get is uh, the, the same request that we can uh, issue by just typing the URL on the browser. So another information, all the requests we, we make when we type a URL in the URL bar of the browser and, and when we enter after typing, we generate get requests, okay, always. So if we want to just test an API, which provides a get method, well, Type it on the, on the browser and see what happens. If we want to get a single track, we just need to add the ID. And this is an example of what we can achieve. So this is the track representation using JSON, the format that you just ended, ended to see 15 minutes ago. So let's see a practical representation in JSON. This is a track. The object is identified by this track keyword. It's an object because it's in between braces, okay? And it has several fields. One field is the ID, 154. Then there, are, there is the path which identifies where the music file is located on the hard disk of the server, in this case, okay? So it's my, it is in the music folder of the user, user, and so on and so on. And then it has the metadata that we can extract from the file. You remember we were extracting the album title and so on. So there is another key which is metadata that again is an object, okay? You see it starts with a brace, okay? So it's an object which is the value of a field in another object, so two nested objects, one inside the other. And uh, the inner object basically holds just the metadata information. So the album name, in this case, Transatlantic RPM, incognito is the artist, as suggests, and the title of the album is Can Get Enough. Yes. We don't have a player on the client. The player is the server. So we are just creating a service on a server? Okay. Uh, okay, the, <laughs> okay, the question was, uh, how can we play the track from the client? We don't. We are just developing a central music server that plays the music. So the server plays the music. So you imagine to have a kind of audio box centralized in a big room and everyone working in the same room can ask the server to play a different track. So, the, so that you have a shared uh, hi-fi system in a single room, but, uh, but the server is playing. Okay. Okay, but this is 
still far from play. This is just about describing what are the tracks. So this is this, the description of a single track. Okay, and if you look at it, try to figure out this, um, you know, in a single line. It's really, 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 really simple and really, really similar to a dictionary in Python. If you remember the dictionary format in Python, it's brace, key in between single quotes, colon, value, and so on and so on, which is almost the same format. So this is an int for us that probably writing JSON from Python will be very easy because there's a kind of direct mapping between the two. Okay, so player. Player is a bit different because, you know, it's easy to understand what a resource is if we think about the track. A track is something tangible on the, on the hard disk on the server. It can be described. It has no operation, so we just have get uh, method for getting information. We can uh, use a put verb for, for modifying the track information and so on. Really, really plain to understand. What about the player? Okay, the player might be seen as a resource. But does it make sense to delete a player? No, probably not. Unless you want to stop having a music server. And also, what does that mean it, that we want to create a new player? Nothing. Because the server is one. So we don't need another player. So it's a, it's a strange resource, but still we can see the player as a single resource and publish it uh, uh, using REST. But in this case, the only thing that we can do on the player is to update its status. So we can change the status of the player from being stopped to being playing uh, tracks uh, to being playing playlist and so on. So in this case, what changes with respect to the former is that we cannot use, if you want to stick to the rest paradigm, we cannot use the post and the delete verbs of the HTTP protocol. Because we don't create new players and we don't delete the player. We just have that singleton player to handle. And the only two verbs that we can use are the get and the put. Put is meant for updating the status of the resource, which in our case is to change the status of the player. And the get is for getting information about the current state of the resource. So to know if the player is playing or not, for example. So what if we want to ask the player to play a playlist composed by three different tracks? We need to send a put request. This request should be sent to the resource, which is the player. So the request will be put on the slash music slash API slash version 1.0 slash player URL. And we need to pass a body in the message that we send, which should be JSON and which should all the information we need for updating the player resource. In our case, it will be which command we want to send and the parameter of the command. So in our case, it will be, for example, play. We want to play what? A playlist. A playlist which is composed by a sequence of tracks. You see here, tracks, it's a sequence, it's an array in JSON, and these numbers are the IDs of the tracks to play. So we want to play track three, and then after finishing track three, track 55, 63, and 77, okay? If you want more tracks, we enlarge the sequence, vice versa, if we want less tracks. So quite easy. What about playing just a single track? How can you change, uh, how would you change this content for the command. Okay, well, the command will be the same, I assume, play. But the, what you play is different. It will not be a playlist, it will be a, a single track. So we may use, for example, the keyword track. And the value would no more be an object, no more be a sequence, but will just be a number, the ID of the track, okay? So the difference between a single track and a playlist is just the parameter of the command. And what if we want to stop the player? Command, column, stop. 
no parameters. And the same for going next or for going to the previous track. Okay, so in the end we designed the REST service. We got two resources which correspond to two different URLs. We defined the payload, okay? And we also identified uh, the verbs that we may use for the different uh, type of resources. In particular, we are gonna use the, all the verbs for the, for the tracks, but in our case, just to simplify the things, only the get one, but we are uh, allowed to use anything because they are just tracks. We can add tracks, remove tracks, modify tracks. Well, for the player, just two verbs. Change the player status, so put, or get the player status, get. Okay, so next, okay, we can go on. No, <laughs> we need to develop, okay? So this is the process. First, designing, then implementing. So the design was quite simple. Let's, let's see if also the implementation is simple or not. You should already have the result on GitHub. So if you want to follow uh, uh, the GitHub part, you can do. Let me close this because I don't want to show the solution now. Um, I would try to organize this, this part in two, in two different pieces. In, uh, in the first one, we tried to develop just one of the two services, the one uh, for the tracks, which is, uh, which is easier. And then I closed the, the in class, developed the code. I, op uh, I opened the, the, the reference one that you have on GitHub and we read the code and try to understand because it's quite long, okay? So I will try to divide the, the lesson in these two parts. Okay, so let's start. What do we need first? I, I already created a project named In Class Rest, okay? Excuse me for the poor fantasy. Um, what do we need? The music player, right? Tracks, music player. What we did in the lab, which was uh, named uh, something like uh, YAM2, yet another music player too. Okay, so let's go to the solutions, get our layer, which is this one, and let's copy it in our project. Okay, now we got our music player. As you were required in the last lab, uh, you know that in Python, you can either use a module as a program, if it has a main, but you can also use the same module as a real module. So use the functions defined in the module from outside. And we are going to do exactly this thing. So what we need is already there. We already developed all the track scanning functions, track list building functions, playing functions. Everything is there, so we don't build anything from scratch, just a quick review of what we have. We have a class track that has basically an ID, a path, and a metadata about the, the track. Let me skip everything. We have a class track list, which is the collection of tracks, basically a sequence of track object, objects, plus some function for scanning the tracks from a folder and from for um, searching the tracks given a tag name, so uh, the artist value or whatever. And finally, we got a player, which has just two methods, which are the, the two one from which we can start. They are play and stop, okay? And then we got the main we, we don't care about. Okay, so we have the functionalities. We want to create and wire on these functionalities the REST service. So we can start up another module, let's call it music server. Okay, can you read, should I enlarge the font? Yes, okay. Appearance, sorry. Colors and fonts, um, text fonts, edit. Yeah, 
maybe too much. Oh, so sorry. Okay, can you read now? It is better? Yes? Good compromise between reading and writing? Yeah. Okay, so let's start. We need to use the player and the tracks and so on. So we import the module. Import YAM2. Okay? And since we just want the, the classes, we could even be more precise. And we can say from YAM2, import. track list, track, and player. Okay, so we just get the classes, not the main part. Okay, then, secondly, um, which package do we use for building a web application? Flask. Okay, so we need to import Flask. So also here from Flask, import. The Flask object to build the, the, the application itself. So Flask. Then, um, a few other things, but let's keep it simple. Um, Okay, this method, this object cupboard, that it, this is just a function that is used for sending a, an error page. So for interrupting the, the, the call coming from a browser and saying, okay, 404, this is an error, not found, okay? Or a 500, internal error, something bad happened, and so on. And the last one we probably need, let me check if we need it. I'm not completely sure. Mm. This one, yes, JSONify. What does JSONify do? It's a function that, given a dictionary, or given something that can be transformed in a JSON, provides back the JSON representation. And since we are going to handle JSON payloads, because we are exchanging JSON data, we need it. This is the very simplest way for handling JSON. There are more efficient and more complex ways, but let's start with that. Okay. Mm. Probably we don't need anything more, but if we need it, we can just import what we need. So, um, then, how can we create a web app? Do you remember? We need to declare a global variable, right? And this variable should be assigned the Flask object. So we need to type something like app equal to something. Okay, let me write it. This should be Flask. Okay. Um, maybe, yeah, okay, should be correct. So this creates the Flask object and we are able, given this object, to run the web application. Okay, what we need for our server? Uh, what other resources we need to expose? Tracks, the list of tracks, okay? So we need this list to handle during the program. So why not declaring also here a global saying this is track list. Okay? And this is initially initially empty. No. Um, and the other resource? There are just two tracks and player. So the other would be player. And also this is initially empty. So, then who is responsible to create 
of creating this list, this player, where, where would you put the code for creating the resources? In the main, in the code that we run when we start the program, okay? Because they are global. Do you want really to, to have the, the, tracks, the track list and the player built when you just load the code, not even before executing it? It's not really clean. That's the difference. It's a, it's a slight difference. It's really a slight difference. But it's better to create them when the program starts. So, yeah, it's just style. <laughs> Nothing uh, really different uh, in the end but we can create them here. So, track list. Let's keep it simple. And let's do something that should not be done, but for the first step is okay. So let's hard code the directory here. I'm using the word hard code because I'm putting the folder location directly in the code. And this makes my program not flexible. I cannot launch the program and tell to the program, okay, this is the folder to expose. I just launch the program and the folder is fixed, okay? So that's why I'm saying let's keep it simple and then we complicate the solution. So the track list is a track list object, okay? How can create a can we create the track list object? Let's go back. Let's see. We add the main, if you remember. Okay, no parameters. And then, when we wanted to load a folder, we called track, track list, add tracks, track list, scan, and a folder. Okay? So, Track list, build the object. The same we can do with the player. So player equal to player. Okay, just created the object now. And now we can also, let's keep it, load the music here. Load the music. To do that, we we type track list dot hard tracks and track list dot scan. And we type here directly the folder, which is for me slash 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 music. Okay? Is it is it clear for you? It's exactly the same uh, as we did in the last lab, at least. Okay, now we created the resources. We loaded the resource uh, track list with all the tracks. What we need to do is to start the server, okay? And to start the server, we just have to type app.run debug equal to true, right? Let me just... Um, I wanted to show you another thing. Let me check. Which is not this one. Okay, let's type it. App dot run debug equal to true, okay? And this makes Flask to run and execute the application. Which application? Do we have an application, a web application here at, the, at this moment? Yes or not? Why is it not saving? Okay, well, I hope to be able to say because it's, there is something wrong here, but anyway, let's go over. Okay, so let's create the web application now. 
and just put in a comment saying REST server. Okay. So we decided the resource URI, you remember. It was something like slash music, slash API, slash version one, slash tracks. Okay? How can we tell to Flash to expose this, this resource? Route, at route, okay? So it was something like at app. What we do, do we do with this is that uh, route rule. The rule is first the URL, second the method we allow. Okay, URL. Um, okay, it's it's the same using double quotes, and you can also use single quotes. Okay, in Python they can be exchanged quite freely. So we said slash music slash API slash version 1.0 slash tracks. Okay, this is our resource. Second, which method do we allow? Methods. Oh, sorry. I mean square bracket. we want to allow this resource to be queried using a get request. So for the moment, we are just providing back the list of the tracks. Yes? Yeah, exactly. But here we don't expose in any page. We are not exposing any page. We are just establishing a rule for the for the server to say when you receive a URL like this, which is slash music slash API slash version one slash tracks, then execute this function. It is in the directory. It's just a URL. So when I type uh, localhost comma 5000, which is the port on which Flask works by default, slash music, slash API, slash version one, slash tracks, Flask calls the function that I'm going to define, okay? So I'm not exposing any, any HTML resource or nothing, just call the function. So here, we need to define a function and say that, get tracks. Okay, um, so what we need to return here? A JSON representation of the track list. Do we have a track list? Yes, we just created it in the main. Okay, so given that JSONify takes a Python object and returns the JSON representation, ideally we should be able to type something like return JSONify track list, right? Okay, this is not going to work, but let's try it, if I'm able to say, because I don't know why this is not saved. Let, let me just move a, a second this thing. It's not saving. Okay. 
don't know why it wasn't saving. Okay, let me go back. Gas. Um, let's try to run this. You see down that the, the track list uh, is scanning the folder. Stop it. Let's see if the server is responding. So we need to open a browser. So the server is up, is responding, but as I was saying to you before, the Janus Sonify call doesn't work. So let's look at the error, and I, I will explain why. You see here, first, iteration over non sequence. Okay? Error on JSONify over non-sequence. Are, are we giving a sequence to JSONify or not? We are giving an object, okay? So we are not giving the tracks. We are giving the track list object. Let's go back. Let's see the track list object form. So even if it seems, you know, easy, it's not so easy. Okay, track list. Is an object which has inside a sequence, these tracks, okay? So what we can do for avoiding this no sequence error is to just give the tracks inside the track list. Let's see what happens. I can already tell you that it does, it does not work again, but, okay? Oh, let me save and reopen, I don't know why. Error again, but now the error is different. So we solved the first error, we got the second. Okay, so it's not so plain converting Python objects into JSON. We need to be, take care. Here the error says that we cannot convert the dictionary update sequence element zero to a sequence. That means, what's the problem? JSONify works really, really well with plain dictionaries. We said the JSON and Python dictionaries are pretty similar. But if we are trying to convert directly complete Python objects, then it cannot be done easily, or at least without handling a little bit the object, okay? So what we can do now is to modify a little bit the track list to get a JSONifiable representation, something that can be directly converted into JSON. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's switch to the track list class and let's modify the class and add the one method. Okay, here we have def jsonifiable. Okay, this is just a name. I, I, I use this just to remember that this is We could, we could, but track list, dot tracks, yeah, but dot tracks is a sequence, then you need to call that data for every item inside, which is a track. So what we are going to do is to provide a, a way for uh, transform, um, yeah, also I'm, I'm putting it in the wrong place, but let me, a way for transforming the track object into something that can be rendered as a JSON. So I was putting it in the, in the wrong place. Thank you. Um, here. Okay. The truck. We said 
dictionary JSON almost equal. Okay, so let's transform the track to be a dictionary. So, um, mm, let's call it uh, JSON reading. This is a dictionary, okay. Then let's fill it with the data we have. So, it's already track with the ID will be equal to self dot ID. Then JSON read track of um, path, right? Will be equal to self. And then JSON read track of. Okay, metadata was the data inside the track was was already a dictionary. Okay, so we can create a dictionary of dictionaries, and just type here something like metadata. Equal to self dot data. Okay, and then return this JSON ready track. Okay, this basically takes the object and compact the object into just a dictionary, plain dictionary. Okay, mapping is quite direct. Can be done uh, by using a simple module, which is JSON. But now we are using the JSON if I, uh, function, which is, let's say, the first step for, uh, for handling JSON in Python. So we need to handle directly the conversion, basically. Okay, now, we have this, this JSONifiable function. Let me save the change and close this, okay. Still we have, if I call this, still it doesn't work. We need to find a way for building up uh, uh, on the fly a sequence of those dictionaries. Okay? And we can do that by using a, a, a quite compact syntax, which is defined in uh, Python, which is this one. Okay. First, let's prepare the outer container, so we say tracks, sorry, let's do it, um, like this, so what is this, this is a, just a, um, sorry, I need to remove this. Okay, this is a dictionary, okay? And, because you remember, in our format, we had this, let me go back. Okay, we don't. <laughs> you see here, this, a single track is added by a track entry and the list of tracks will be added by a tracks entry. So I'm just adding that tracks entry here, tracks, and after that, we can generate on the fly the array of tracks, of JSONify yable representation of tracks. We can do this by using this construct, which is really tricky a bit, that is track dot JSONify bone. Okay, but where it comes from this? From track in track list dot tracks. So, 
This is a really compact construct in Python, really hard to understand perhaps, but what does this construct is to say, just build a new array, build a new sequence, okay, whose entries are the result of the JSONifiable call on all the entries of the track list. So it basically it iterates over all the tracks in the track list, and for each of the tracks containing in the, in the original sequence, it calls the JSONifiable object. So super compact. Okay? Yeah. If you want, you can write a four cycle along like uh, six lines. Yes, you can. Yes. But this is a very Pythonic code. Track, you, you need to, to write, you need to write uh, something like list of, tra list of tracks equal empty dictionary. Then, for track in track list dot tracks, list of tracks dot append uh, track dot jsonifiable. Okay? So let, let's write it. The, the extended version would be then I, I am just removing it. Um, if you wanted to, to write it extended, you, you could write something like uh, uh, let's call it tracks equal to empty sequence, then for track in track list. Uh, sorry. Dot tracks. Track dot append. Oh, sorry. This should be different because otherwise it doesn't work. Let's call it track. Okay, that's it, the same. And then you return JSONify tracks column track, it's the same. These two pieces of code do the, exactly the same thing, okay? But the Python developer would prefer the first one because it's more compact. That's why I try to introduce also this one because we are going to see this kind of code in, in uh, modules and uh, things you can download from the internet, okay? But this is, Okay, this is what, what the, that piece of code does. Okay, just compressed. Okay, then. Um, yes, let me reopen, I don't know why. Okay, let's start. And cross the finger. That's it. Okay, so now we got the tracks. This is our first REST service, really first. We are sending a GET request and we can see it. If I just, you can also do it uh, at home if you want. If you just, just turn to the developer view, here go to the network and reload, you see here the request I'm sending, GET, so when the browser when you write in the browser the URL and type enter, the browser sends a get request to the URL you give, and you can also see the response, which is an array of, you see here the browser already interprets the JSON and says this is an array of, of objects with ID, path, inside as a metadata, which is an object, and so on, okay? So this is the actual request that, that is sent from the browser. And this is the rendering, okay? So in the end, really, it was, okay, apart the, you know, the, the sugar we needed to add for getting the, the JSON format, but the rest is, is really simple. Just define the route, which is the URL of the resource, and 
the function that provides back the resource representation. And that's it. Okay? Okay. Then, since we have just almost half an hour, I, I would switch from developing to just reading the code. So, please forgive me, but <laughs> I, I don't have any option uh, for, for getting the complete exercise done by developing. Okay, so let me close this and let me open the solution you got on GitHub, which is exactly based on the same principle, a little bit more complicated, but let's go to the tracks and you see here that's our code. Return JSONify tracks, tracks JSONifiable for track in tracks, okay? It's the same. So I'm not simplifying anything. Then, let's have some fun. So, let's start the full player. Let's go back here. You sh we should have the tracks again because the, you know, the function is the same, in fact. But now, what happens? Something should happen. <laughs> Did I buy my phone ring? Maybe I changed something. Oh, let me switch to this, which is the same. Because I was working just before coming here, so maybe I, I did something wrong. Just one second, let me check if there is something running. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, yeah. Got it. Okay. So this is the lab. <laughs> okay. Don't look at the solution. <laughs> but let, let's let's just have some fun. So this is one track. I get the list of track by sending a get request. The same. Now let's play. This is what we achieve. Okay. Okay, this, is, this was just okay to relax a bit. <laughs> no more code, just music. Okay, again, let's go back to the code. Okay, let's uh, ignore all the other imports which are not important. Let's see the application, okay? Uh, uh, let me switch, sorry, to the... Um, the one I need to show you today, which is not this one, but this. Okay. So, um, tracks, our first resource. Second, we want to show a single track. Okay, how can we show a single track? We just define the URI of the collection plus the ID of the track, you remember. And this can be done here using this route instruction that says music API version one, tracks, and then there is this strange notation that says, okay, the last part would be put in the track ID variable and will be an integer. You see there, int column track ID. So what I'm saying to Flask is, please, when you get a, a request where the first part is uh, slash music, slash API, slash version one, slash tracks, and then there is a number, map the request to this function and take the number and put it in the function parameter named track ID, okay? So when I send a get like this to, to our web server, this get track gets called 
and the number after the, at the end of the URL will be put inside this track ID variable. So here we can start working with our track list and just select the one having the ID given by the URL. And this is done here. You see, track list dot get track track ID. Okay, we don't have this get track in our uh, base library, YAMP, wasn't provided a get track. So let's go to the modified library and see what a get track does. Get track. You see here a very similar code to the one before. Okay. So, get track, given a track ID. What, what does this function? Searches inside the sequence of tracks for the track having the same ID of the number given. Same construct. So, the resulting set will be the set composed by all the tracks that inside the sequence match the ID. So, for all the tracks in the set tracks, if the track ID is equal, then add the current track to the resulting array. And if everything is fine and we, we assign single IDs, unique IDs to uh, different tracks, we end up with a, a one sequence, so a sequence with just one entry, which is the track we search for. And then we can just check. If the length of the sequence is zero, okay, there is no track having the given ID, if the length of the sequence is greater than zero, then the only element of the sequence is the track we want. And we return it back. And that's this return track of zero. So you see, the same format as before, very compact to do a quite complex task, which is iterating over all the tracks and looking for similar ideas, for equal ideas, okay? But finally, at the end, we get the track. That can either be the real track or nothing. So what we need to check is that, okay, if it's nothing, so we return minus one, then the request should be closed because we don't have the track and we need to return an error and this error should be the right error. And in our case, it will be not found because the client is asking something that doesn't exist on the server. The track doesn't exist. So this will be 404, page not found. Instead, if everything goes well, we return back the, the JSONifiable version of the track. So the same as before, track, track dot JSONifiable. Okay, is it clear for you or um, you have problems? Okay. Finally, there's this probably new construct, which is this try except. Try tells, okay, the code following try is gonna to generate errors in some cases. We don't know when, when but perhaps there, there might happen errors. If an error happens, then the code inside the accept clause will be executed. So that's, this means that if in the process of getting the track and transforming the track, some error happens, like the one before, for example, the track is not uh, convertible in, uh, into JSON, then as a result, return back an error, which is 403 in this case. Okay, so let me check. If we can run this, okay. Now let's put here, I don't know, 2000. Okay, so now Flask is not more call, calling the get tracks method, but it's, um, yeah, the, the original get tracks method that we wrote, but the one with, for a specific track. Because the URL is longer, it has tracks, the same URL as before until tracks, and then a number, which is the idea of the track to find, okay? And there is actually one track having the ID 2000, 
actually I, I didn't know this because there are more than nearly 3,000 songs on, on, the, on the hard disk, so I would pretty sure that 2,000 were there. And we get this, what if I put here 20,000, which I'm pretty sure is not there? Forbidden. 403 is forbidden. One thousand is there. Okay. Okay. So, still just getting the track information. But here we have all all we need to contact the server, get the list of available tracks, and require the server to play a given track, the one we like. Okay. So next step will be playing. How can we make the player object play by sending a request? Okay, we said that, let me, let me take the slide for which I have the example now. Okay. This was the example, let me turn to presentation. Okay. Command was put on uh, the uh, REST URL of the, play, of the player, which was slash music slash API slash version one slash player, com payload command equal to play. And for the single track would be track uh, ID of the track, okay? So what we need to do on the server side is to interpret this format. So to read this JSON and to convert it to a call to a proper function on the player. So. Control player, same pattern, app, route, URL, music API, version one player, but now the allowed methods are only put. We don't allow get in this case. Then in the lab you will also be required to allow get, but for now it's just put. We want to get the JSON body of the request. Well, request JSON body, in Python will become request.json. Okay, so here in this player request variable, we have the JSON, okay? And this JSON is a dictionary, as we said before. It's almost a one-to-one -one mapping. So we can treat this, the result of this JSON variable as a dictionary, and for example, check if there is a command inside. Because if in the payload there is no common keyword, then something wrong happens. So probably the application is sending the, the wrong payload. But if the common is in there, then we need to interpret the common. And to understand if uh, the common is playing, stop, go next. Okay, so what we can do, what we do is to get the common value and store it into a variable. First, to check if the key is inside the dictionary. Second, get the value of the key. Then, this portion might generate error, so inside the try portion. And let's start handling commands. Let's just look at play for the first time. Okay, what happens if someone types play in uppercase? Two choices. Either we are strict and we refuse the command, which is not allowed, because we are supposed to get play in lowercase, or as in this case, we are open, and we just take all the commands and convert them to lowercase in any, in any case, so that we match actually the command value, not the case. So what we do, what we do here with this uh, if construct is just to convert the command to a lowercase and compare it to the play string. If it's equal, then we can get the track information. Is the track information available? Yes. Well, we have all the information we need for playing a track. If not, error or something else. So let's assume that the track information is available. So if track is in play request, okay, let's get the track number, so play request, uh, of track, which is the value of the key track inside the play request. 
the last check just to be very, very safe that everything is there, okay? So if the ID is not empty and the ID, well, if the ID is defined and it's not empty, so we are really, really sure that we got the ID and we got the command play, what do we need? Get the full information about the track. Because if you remember the player was playing a track object. We, we gave to the player a track object for playing. So we need to retrieve the track object. And we can do the same using the same function as before. Once we get the track ID, we can get back the track, the full track. So the full track would be track list get track of the ID, exactly the same as before. We check that the track is different from minus one so that the track is valid. This is just the bug, okay? And then call play on the, on the player. Okay, in this version, the old play function was renamed load and play because actually when we call play, if you remember, we were loading the file inside and player and starting and player. So it's a, it is just a name change. Okay, so we got the track, the full track representation. We pass it to the player and send play. And that's it. Okay? So our server is still running. How can we do this? Not from the browser, right? Because from the browser, what we can do without programming is just to send get requests, not post not put, not delete. But we can do the same using CUR. That's the name, actually. Um, which is a command line program on Linux. Let's have a look at the syntax. Um, let's play this one. Okay. Curl, command. Minus H means uh, adder the header of the HTTP request that will be sent. In this case, I'm saying, okay, please be prepared. I'm sending a JSON payload, okay? So I'm, I'm telling to the server, the content type of the request will be application JSON. Where I get the, the content? Inside the file named track.json, okay? And where I put the content, where I send the content, with this minor hex, I can provide the method put and the URL, HTTP, localhost, 5000, music, API, version one, player, okay? So this is a way for sending a whatever request from command line. In this case, it's a, for sending a put request on the player. Let's have a look at the track JSON, just to make sure that the, the format is the one we expect. JSON is here, you see, command play track 39, okay? Then we can run it. Uh, let me get back my console view. Oh, that's too big. Can you see anything? Should I, let me check if I can do this. Okay, it's better. So let me change it to. Okay, right place. Too big, sorry. Uh, and let me just launch the test. Track. And I can do the same with the stop, okay? So I'm just sending requests over HTTP. And it's clear that this is a different program. I'm not working on the server in this case, I'm acting as a client, 
Okay? Okay, very, 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 very quick. The last five seconds, five minutes of the lesson. What about the other comments? Let's keep the playlist, I can leave it to you. Stop. The payload is only the command part, which should be equal to stop. So everything equal to play, but now we check for the stop value. So if command.lower is equal to stop, player.stop. Then there will be other pro commands that are just for playlists. Uh, what, what happens if I ask the player to just play one track and then I click on next? No other tracks in queue, okay? So it cannot be applied. Okay, mm. let's have a look at the playlist in the end, which is the last part. Then of course you can have a look at the code at home and if you have any problems in the lab, just ask me because I know this is really long, but there's no way to make it shorter. Okay. Mm. Play if command load. Okay, if the command is play, but instead of track, the other parameter is playlist, then what we need to do is to load more than one file into a player, basically, okay? So what we do is to get the, the list of ideas mm -hmm. by getting the playlist value, okay? So we get the value of the parameter playlist inside the JSON, which will be an array of IDs. We check it to be sure that it's not empty. And then we start prepare a sequence of full track information about the tracks identified by the given IDs. We iterate over the tracks. So you see here for track in playlist of tracks. Full track data equal to track list get track. So for each entry inside the array given on the, on the JSON body, we get the full track data. And once we get the full track data, if this full track data, the list of full track data is not empty, we ask the player to load the playlist. So the, the, the logic is no more here. We are kept, keeping the, the business logic of the player and the business logic of the REST server separate. Here we just send the requests, okay? So we get the, the request, the body, we interpret the body, and we run the right commands on the player. But the real logic needed for playing or for playing a playlist is on the player. It's something that the player must do, not the server, okay? So if we go inside the player and look at the play, load playlist, which is the very last one part, load playlist, what does? Takes a list, a sequence of full track descriptions, track objects. Starts from the first track. And say, okay, for all the tracks in the list of track, of tracks, sorry, <laughs> given, get the, the current playlist handled by the player. This is just a variable, mm -hmm. so just another sequence, and append the track information. But it does something more. If this is the first track, so the player is empty, the, the VM player is empty, the, the command line player is empty, then just write load file as before, which is the same command sent when we play a track. But if it's not the first, and the player probably is already playing because we already seen the first track, then keep the player loading the file, and this causes M player to queue the other file. So the, the first uh, is loaded and played, the other files are queued. So in this case, we are loading the player with the, the, whole play, the full playlist. And in this case, we will be able to go uh, next and, for, and uh, backward also. But not only, uh, because the command is the same, so this can be improved, this code can also be improved, but um, 
what we can also do is to update the status of the player. So in the first track, we start playing. So we switch the status to playing. You see here, set.status playing. And we may update what we are playing. The track, the current track. And the ID, of course, is zero because it's the first track inside the queue. And that's it. So that's, that's the difference between simple playing and playlist playing. In this case, we are loading more files inside the player. And if we need to go next, uh, then, okay, it's above. Next will be just a matter of sending a different command to the load and play. Okay, here, to a player and saying, PT step one. So go forward by one step. This is next. Okay, the rest uh, can be ignored. You can uh, look at it. it. It is just meant for handling the, the playlist, basically. Okay, so last trial. Let's try to test the playlist. It's the same, so I'm uh, using curl another time from the command line. Test playlist. Perhaps. Okay. And you see here what I got back. Okay. It starts. And I get back here. Okay, let me go a bit. A JSON response. So in this case, when I perform the put request, the server responds me back saying, okay, I'm starting to play the playlist, and my status is, is this one. I'm playing this track, which is the current one. The current queue is, oh, sorry, is this one. You see queue with the, the tracks that, that still can have to be played, okay? And the current status, which is playing. Okay, so in response to the update request, the player basically provides me back a confirmation of the update change and a snapshot of, what's the, the, of what the state of the player is now after the change. Okay, that's it. And if you go, want to go next, you have just to send next. Okay. So let me stop it now. Next, changing. Okay, that's it. Um, if you have any question, please ask me in the lab. The lab would be about extending this server. So start reading the code, try to understand it, try to run it to be prepared for the, for the Monday work, okay?